Hello, my name is Stephen Fulmer, and I'm here to talk to you about my pick and place uh, robotic arm. As robotics continues to become a more integral part of our industrial complex, there's a need for more and more automated systems that require minimum to no user training to operate. With this motivation in mind, the system I'm designing is so that a beginner user can operate my, my device with very little instruction. My design projects will allow for users to determine their desired objects, which will then be picked up and placed by a robotic arm into the target location. With the aid of computer vision, my robotic arm <clears throat> will allow users to filter their desired objects based on color, shape, size. Uh, and utilizing this method of machine learning, I'm hoping to provide a low cost, low maintenance, and uh, shorter to uh, retrain uh, alternate solution to the majority of our industrial standard machines. All right, uh, before you now, uh, this is uh, my basic block diagram. As you can see, um, basically it's just uh, uh, from left to right. Um, you can see that so we're going to capture the device itself uh, on video. And then <clears throat> once the object has been captured, uh, OpenCV or Open Computer Vision uh, will then effectively then sort the object based on color, uh, its shape, and then size detection, which will then be fed out to the uh, corresponding video screen. I'm using my laptop, of course. But on a side process, uh, from that shape that's been determined by OpenCV, a center uh, extraction point uh, will then be determined uh, automatically. And then from that, um, the center extraction point will then be converted from a 2D on the video screen um, uh, coordinate system into a 3D uh, uh, Cartesian plane uh, points, which will then be sent uh, for inverse kinematics to then move the robotic arm freely through uh, three-dimensional space. Uh, <clears throat> for this, I'm showing uh, effectively um, all of my programming, by the way, is done uh, within Python. Um, and the backbone that I'm using, um, which I kind of went over a little bit before, is uh, a thing called OpenCV. Uh, this is the object detection uh, algorithm that I ran on just a simple uh, shapes of varying colors and varying rotational sizes, uh, rotations. And um, um, well, as you can see, uh, from the input to the output, uh, my program will effectively tell you, hey, this is a triangle that's facing to the right, or oh, this is a triangle facing to, you know, up. But it will still notice it's a triangle. It's not going to be fooled effectively by the shape's uh, orientation uh, within space. From that, uh, which was effectively a simulation within the program, um, this is uh, showing my object detection um, actually working in the real world. Um, to the left, you can kind of see my robotic arm, which above it, there's a camera uh, facing down. And I'll place some uh, simple um, um, uh, objects uh, out in front of it. Um, kind of what was done before, except for a perfect simulation. Um, now my program can effectively say, hey, this is a triangle, you know, circle, the square. But not only that, as you can notice on the right side, uh, it's also determining, right, its center um, or centroid extraction point which is really very uh, key, especially for how much I need for my arm to open up um, and then to grasp the object itself. So I don't want to crush it and also don't want to, you know, to not open up far enough, you know, to be able to actually, um, well, pick it up. Uh, this slide is effectively showing a, a brief overview of um, my uh, robotic movement, which I kind of glanced over a little bit before. Um, I'll be using, again, uh, inverse kinematics or the, the programming that I've, I've chosen effectively, or the math really, is uh, inverse kinematics. Um, okay, so forward kinematics basically refers to the process of determining a position and orientation of the end effector based on its joint angles. <clears throat> so it's, I'm moving this joint angle, and then it's just, boom, um, my end effector is just coming to the point of, it's, 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 it's hailed by whatever um, its daughter uh, joints are doing. While in contrast, the uh, inverse kinematics, which I'm going to be using, uh, refers to the process of determining uh, the values of the joint angles for the position itself. So instead of just moving the joint to then, oh, I'm at this point, I'm saying I need to be at this point, so I need all of these angles to then morph or amalgamate to, uh, to where I need you to be for me to be at this point in space. The choice to use uh, for inverse kinematics really just depends on the task at hand. Uh, forward kinematics is useful when you want to know the value of the joint angles and if you want to know where the end effector is located. But for my project, I've chosen to use inverse kinematics uh, due to wanting uh, my end effector to be located at a very specific point uh, in space. 
basically, I need uh, to uh, contain within my program uh, the ability to determine the values of the joint angles uh, needed to achieve a specific uh, three-dimensional point in space. Um, <clears throat> this slide is basically showing my um, kind of basic blocks uh, for my um, uh, uh, PC board that I uh, designed, which will be providing uh, power and also my uh, pulse width modulation uh, signals to each one of my servos themselves. Really, the hearts and the brains is on the top uh, right, uh, which is labeled the Arduino and servo connections. For this, I initially had used a Arduino Micro, uh, but for now, I'm using an Arduino Nano because I accidentally uh, fried that one. Um, and really, the reason for um, um, a lot of what you're seeing as well is on the, the top left for my primary wall adapter. Uh, this is taken out from, from the, uh, the 120 volts AC from the wall. I'm taking that down, uh, rectifying it <laughs> to 12 volts DC. And then from that, the 12 volts uh, will then uh, be sent through a 5 volt voltage limiter. And uh, to basically protect my Arduino and also supply enough amps and um, 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 uh, voltage uh, to each one of my uh, servos uh, for the robotic arm itself. The other parts of the diagram is really just uh, the auxiliary power uh, input and outputs. I designed this for um, modification for just in case, <laughs> say if you're a company that has already your motor and you're already just supplying it with power, you then should be able to take my PCB board and then just take out your 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 old connections and put, and put mine uh, basically within the circuit, except for now you've also got a brain that will hopefully be able to give you what you need for uh, object detection and uh, utilization of uh, computer vision. Uh, this is um, uh, basically uh, what you were seeing here on the slide before, uh, but uh, what was actually uh, printed, I used a GLPCB. Uh, for this, you can see my Arduino Nano is kind of hooked up and my relays and uh, my power switch and my LEDs. And uh, to the left is really just this, uh, the actual physical a wiring diagram uh, that was sent uh, to, to JLPCB for them to then print a board for them for me to build and solder uh, to what you're seeing uh, to the right. Uh, this is kind of a top overshoot with my uh, robot's body. I initially had actually de uh, designed this to be a um, uh, built fully from a 3D printer, but uh, I kind of ran into logistics issues uh, with getting the screws that I needed uh, from Amazon and a few other things. Uh, so really with time pressing on, I decided to go with these uh, off the parts um, uh, die cast aluminum um, uh, brackets uh, for my motor. Right. And then finally, software control. Um, my GUI was designed to, uh, with the Tinker library, uh, again in Python. Uh, you're kind of seeing uh, the main shell <laughs> that I'm hoping that for each one or each individual user to see. Because the point is really not just to have object detection and all this fancy stuff for the robot itself, but also to have, like, for again, a beginner user. And then for this, my uh, or my goal in mind was your here's your screen, everything's plugged up. You select just hey, I'm going to pick in place or manual control, whatever you're needing. And then from there, um, you should be able to with a very very minimal understanding of robotics, be able to hey, like this is this is my desired objects where I need to do you know a pick in place um, movement. Uh, this is a uh, demonstration of my video. Or I guess the operation. You can see the <clears throat> the robot is noticing the rectangle. It's figured out the centroid or the center. It's uh, <clears throat> grasped it exactly as it needed, and now I'm just going to place it to the side, and it's going to return back to its home position. Okay, uh, from my requirements matrix, um, basically I have met close to everything that I initially set out for. Um, even uh, thankfully I had the foresight uh, for my uh, joints and leakage uh, will be 3D printed or aluminum CNC milled. Um, but outside of that, it's really just kind of covering what it, um, I chose last semester and really this as well, and then what my goals were, which I feel that um, uh, I have uh, came close to. Or have a cheat, sorry.
this is a slide kind of just showing my uh, bill of materials and my CAN chart. <clears throat> the thing I would like to point out too is that uh, through or for my entire project, um, it's really like something that would have cost maybe you know five you know uh, six thousand dollars. I have been able to equate or you know I've been able to um, press down to really you know eighty seven dollars. I mean, I guess you could factor in man hours for uh, programming, but I'll set up that the total cost is actually quite cheap. And that's it. Uh, thank you for listening to my project.